Calm down, man. You've been driving like an ass. No, I haven't. Relax. Yeah. How? Shut the f up. Why are you telling me to shut up? Because I split in the in the lanes. You know that's that's. Exactly. What's the reason? Because you can't. Why are you so mad, man? Relax. Relax. Poor guy's driving a Nissan Sentra. I'd be upset too. Howdy everybody, welcome to another Riding in Traffic with Yam. These are my long form unedited videos where I ride in traffic, try to give you guys some tips and tricks, give you that more raw feeling of what it's really going to be like out there in the streets. And I thought I'd start this video off by uh, discussing a little road rage situation I just encountered. It's super weird. I thought I was riding completely reasonably. I had filtered up at a red light just to get away from some traffic. I wasn't even speeding, doing nothing. And, uh, you know, old mate in the Nissan Sentra didn't like it. So that can happen sometimes. When you're on a motorcycle, people can be irate. People can be crazy. The best thing you can do is try to defuse the situation. So. Uh, I tried to just stay calm, try to tell the guy to relax. I tried to understand why he was so upset at me and he just kept telling me to shut up. I wasn't really sure what was going on. And uh, yeah, so just, you know, if someone's super mad at you, don't mimic their energy. Just say, hey man, relax. What are you, what's the problem? What's going on? You know, what can I do to, to make you, you know, not so mad? I'm, I'm sorry if I did something to you. So trying to be calm in traffic is gonna be the best thing for you. Uh, I'm still not really sure what I did to that guy uh, that made him so angry. He tooted his horn at me, yelling at me, but hey, that can happen sometimes. And uh, again, the best thing you do is just keep it calm. So we're here in suburbia. We're way out from Austin. We're like uh, 183 in Whitestone. This is a good like 20 or 30 miles north of the city. I don't come out here that often, and the reason I don't is because you can see how congested and suburby the kind of traffic is. And maybe this is just my prejudice, but I feel like people who live in the suburbs are just more irate than people who live near the city. Uh, I find that traffic in suburbs, people are always so mad. <laughs> and I feel like when you live near the city, you're kind of expecting people to drive a little crazier. And I think people are a little more mellow. So I like to be a little bit more on high alert, especially when you're on these kind of roads here. This is a street road. It's a uh, public infrastructure kind of slur. You know, these big wide roads. Uh, I like that there's a big median right there. That makes me a little bit safer, but um, yeah, these like huge roads with 50 mile per hour speed limits, like they're basically like mini highways. Um, I've had many international friends of mine and uh, you know, family members who when they come visit, they're just like, why are your roads all like highways? <laughs> and it is a bit strange if you think about it. Like this is designed for maximum efficiency of car transit. Uh, you can see there's no thought to human beings, no thought to, uh, you know, trying to make it a little more narrow and safer. People tend to speed on these roads a whole lot. I mean, a 50 mile per hour speed limit is pretty damn high for a, a commercial area like this. But anyways, you see here, we are in the left-hand side of the lane. Uh, we could filter up right now because the light is red. So why don't we go ahead and do that real quick? Maybe we'll make someone else angry at us, but we don't really want to get anybody too mad at us. We'll go up here in the work truck. Work trucks tend to be pretty chill. Pop right over here. Safer for me, better for everybody. And uh, yeah, now we're here in front of all that traffic, which is better for me, you know? Again, if you guys have seen these videos before, you'll know that I don't follow the rules 100%. I am not a uh, absolute rule follower when it comes to traffic. I am a safety advocate, and I'm gonna do things that may be bending the rules or against the rules, but they keep me safer. So here, I can't get rear-ended by anybody because the traffic is all stopped up and there's plenty of space between me and them. And I prefer it, man, I just prefer it. That way when this light turns green, I got good visibility, create a space cushion between me and all these cars. I prefer it. I don't want to be around a bunch of cars. I don't want to be, you know, in that kind of situation. It also gives me better visibility to this intersection. I see that we have a controlled left-hand turn over there. It makes it a little bit safer for us. I see traffic slowing down. See, I had the green, but still had cars coming, so just wait a little bit. Get that guy trying to turn right, but he couldn't get it done, so we're good to go. 
pushing away on this MT-09 SP giveaway bike, by the way, folks. Go and check out yamandoob.co. Get entered to win. You won't want to miss it. All right, so many tar snakes here. Look at that. I don't even want to mess around with that. Now we got some clear asphalt right here. This is a beautiful little on-ramp, so why don't we go and accelerate a little bit on our motorcycle, shall we? And we'll shut it down. Coast on the brakes. And that's what I mean when you pick your time and place, you know? You find a nice on-ramp like that, those are my favorite because nobody can come in or out. All you gotta do is watch the traffic to the left-hand side and you are totally cool for that. We're now on this big highway right here. I'm gonna stick here in the middle lane, keep on over here to the left just in case people jump out from the right lane into my center lane. Go ahead and hit cruise control on this Yamaha MT-09 SP because I got it and I really appreciate it. And when I use cruise control on a motorcycle, if you guys are lucky enough to ride a bike that's advanced enough to have them, and I, man, I love cruise control on motorcycles, especially for situations like this, I still hover my hand over the brakes. Like, if I have super clear traffic ahead of me like this, sometimes I will take my right hand off, just kind of go like this a little bit, stretch it out. If I'm doing like a big, you know, three, 400 mile day, if I end up on the highway like this, I will just kind of chill out a little bit like that. Put my hand back on here, rest it, and I still get a nice amount of rest because I am uh, hovering my hand, but I'm not having to crank on the throttle the entire time. So it's nice to be able to just rest it a little bit, chill out. It's a good feeling. Back here in the right-hand side of the lane, I think my brain naturally did that because uh, the road was going a little bit to the right, and I think I just wanted to hug the line. But really, I should be over here to the left. That's going to be the best positioning. So we'll try to follow best practice, best positioning. We can just cruise right here. And this honestly is one of the best parts about motorcycling. You know, obviously I love hitting up twisty roads. I love, you know, going to the track, but there is something about just cruising on a nice big open highway that does feel really, really good. I don't like doing it for more than like maybe 20 or 30 miles and I get kind of bored, but it is nice to be able to fuel your motorcycle higher up in the register or the rev range, feel the power, cruise along a little bit. I like naked bikes like this too. I get to feel the wind in my chest a little bit more and it's real nice. So one thing I wanted to point out to you guys when you're on your motorcycle, there's two things actually because I have two things to point out up there. Highway intersections like this tend to be one of the craziest points in a highway, right? And especially if it's under construction like this one. See the lane merged down. It looks like they're setting up a new express lane or something like that. Um, I'm going to stick here to the right, turn off my cruise control because we have a little bit more traffic here and I don't want to have that situation. I'm sticking here to the right of the lane because I have a hard barrier to my left. I don't like being that close to the barrier if I can help it um, because it doesn't give me any path of movement. If I'm already there on the left and there's all this construction and someone comes in, I got nowhere to go, right? If I'm here on the right, I got a little bit more space in case someone tries to go over, I can hit the brakes and drift off to the left a little bit, give them space. But if I'm already on the left, I'm kind of screwed, right? So that's something to keep in mind of on highways like this. Uh, don't stay super near the barrier. Uh, it's, it's a bad idea. Also, you want to make progress through traffic. So I'm in the left-hand lane here, so I don't want to have people just sitting next to me for a long amount of time. I'll be cruising here. I'm trying to make sure that people are not sitting too close to me to the side because uh, you're on a motorcycle. You might as well be invisible. So we're keeping an eye on this Corolla right here. We're gonna hit the brakes a little bit because we're getting too close to that Ford right up ahead of me. He's drifting off the lane a bit, a little bit. Corolla looks like he's trying to pass on the right, which is bizarre. And so now we are actually going to go in the center lane to give us a little bit more opportunity to maybe flow through traffic. Um, this is something strange that can happen in America. You guys over in, let's go ahead and not stick around here. And you see, when I go for a pass like that, I go off to the right to give myself a little bit more space. Go back over here in the left-hand side of the lane, avoiding this line. You see the seam in the road? This is what I tell you guys, that lane positioning is not a black or white thing. You have to always be adjusting what you're doing. Because if you're just religiously sticking to the rules or to your lane positioning, you're not giving yourself bandwidth to be as safe as possible. So honestly, I have a little spot here where I'm right in between the seam and the paint line. I feel pretty good about that. 
but the road condition might change such that I might want to actually uh, not be stuck in the seam because the seam is going to provide me less traction. So anyways, we're always keeping mind of the following distance, trying to make sure nobody's around us. And you see that we turned off cruise control once the traffic picked up a little bit. You only want to use cruise control when it's really clear and open and you're on like a big old highway, right? We're going to jump into the left lane preemptively right here because you see all those people jumping into the lane uh, onto the highway from the right-hand side, right? This guy's probably going to try to go over to the left. We're avoiding the seam on the left-hand side of this road uh, because now we're in a teensy bit of a pickle, right? We have lots of cars on the right. And so I don't want to stick in the right-hand side of the lane because I'm too close to the cars, right? But I'm here on the left and I'm super close to the barrier and the seam. So I'm doing the best I can with the lane position that is offered to me with the amount of traffic that's on this highway. We're doing about 70 miles an hour. I'm keeping about a two second following distance to the car ahead of me. It looks like this work truck might go over to my lane. I'm gonna preemptively speed up a little bit and make sure that I've got him covered right there. My left hand thumb is always covered over the horn so I can quickly uh, give at least a little bit of a beep, let somebody know that I'm right here and uh, I don't wanna get smushed. So we see here, we got this Jeep right here. We don't have enough space to safely follow the car in front of us. So I'm in a bad position here because this guy could come on over, but there's enough space such that if he did, I have the, the room for it. All right, so check it out. We are slowing down in the traffic now. Move over here to the right just to see what's going on. See if we could possibly move out of the way a little bit. Now, those of you in California will say, Yam, go for the split. Go for the lane split. Now again, guys, I live in Texas and I only like to lane split or filter rather when everybody stopped at a red light. That way I can gain a lot of speed and cushion and uh, improve my life. However, I really don't like lane filtering uh, in situations like this or lane splitting rather because it's just too congested and people are so uh, quick to, to jump out of the lane for some reason here. When things slow down you know, on Texas highways, people love to just last minute go for a left, go for a right, and it's just such a bummer because uh, it really makes it less safe for everybody and it creates an accordion effect in traffic, which really is such a bummer. So again, now we're, we're going way slower. We are in the left-hand side of the lane to avoid the cars next to us. Everybody's going so slow and is super bunched up that there's not much I can do in order to create a space cushion to the cars next to me. Look, look at this guy over here. He just jumped to the left. Look at that. Last minute, no signal. Tesla behind him was having to keep it covered. And they might go all the way over to the left. That's why you got to keep an eye on them. Keep your finger covered over the brake lever and the horn right here just to give yourself that chance, you know? We're going at an okay speed. We're doing like 37 miles an hour. Uh, not the best, but again, not worth it for me to try to lane split to go 50. Uh, the, the delta is just not there. Uh, and the closing speeds are, are way off for me. Um, if someone sideswipes me at 43 miles an hour, I'm gonna have a really, really, really bad day. <laughs> um, versus, you know, Worst comes to worst in a red light situation, if you're going five miles an hour filtering to the front, if someone does randomly jump out at the last minute, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be fun, it's gonna really stink, but it's also not gonna be the end of the world. But you can have pretty bad mechanism of injury uh, whenever you have something like that. You know, you can rotate your bike, rotate your leg, it can be pretty nasty. So, we're here in the left, just because it seems like it's flowing a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and jump off the highway because my exit's actually coming up over here. Every time we're going towards an exit, we are slightly accelerating just to get out of everybody's way. Once we're over here on the right, stick over here to the right on the highway. Watch for anybody making any last minute exits. So watching this truck, we're not gonna speed by them. We're gonna keep our closing distance uh, diagonally to them, right? Just to make sure that if they come through, you got it covered. All right. so successfully navigated a little highway section. Hooray, very nice for us. Now we have a bit of a merge going on here. Uh, I am still covering my front brake. I'm watching to see what's going on. I'm gonna be taking a left up here at this road. So I'm watching to see if anybody's gonna be taking a last minute left. Keeping an eye on my traffic pattern, looks like the two lanes offered to me can go left. So I'm gonna go ahead and go left on this one so that I've got a little bit more room. And I'm gonna sit right here. 
I could filter up to the front, but I see that uh, there's uh, not really that much space up there towards the crosswalk, and so we uh, want to be a little bit more careful. There we go. No problem anyways, because we got to get going. Gonna cancel my uh, cruise control right there. Take this left under the bridge. Acura's moving out of my way, got some tar snakes. Stick over to the left, best positioning for us. And click it up into fourth gear because I'm on an MT-09 SP, I got plenty of torque and punch. Trying to get some good MPGs on this bad boy. And you see that we're back to another almost highway-esque road. You get these a lot in America where you have these suburban roads that are three lanes wide. All right, I got the yellow, so we're gonna just go for it. Plenty of torque and power to clear the yellow, no problem. But yeah, you get you get these situations where, uh, you know, th like this is almost like a highway, you know, and it's really kind of crap because people like to speed on these roads and they go super fast and these, just these roads are just terrible for public infrastructure, you know. All right, coming up to the red, I see it all the way down the horizon over there. Got the Tesla getting in front of me over here. Gonna start grabbing down gears. I have a quick shift up and down on this machine so I can go all the way into first gear if I'd like right here like that grabbing in our clutch as we come to a stop I stamp on the shifter just to ensure that I'm in first gear again and when I'm at a stop sign like this uh, you know I'm in the right hand lane here in the right hand side of the lane I could be in the left again it's not a perfect situation I didn't want to get over because I saw this gravel and crap and it looks like glass and the last thing I want is a flat tire right so I actually chose to stick in here so I wouldn't jump over some glass or anything like that. Um, I'm doing the, the one foot down technique, by the way, guys. I've talked to you about this before in many videos. Uh, it's second nature to me now, um, after, you know, 10 years of riding or whatever. But yeah, right foot's on the rear brake, left foot is down, uh, I'm in first gear, and my left hand is feathering the clutch in. Once I'm ready to go, all I need to do is put my hand on the throttle and take off. That's all I need. I don't need to fumble around. I don't need to do anything. Uh, it makes it a whole lot easier. So we're here, hanging out, waiting for the light to turn red. We could uh, we could filter up there in front of that Mazda, but I don't know. I made that guy super mad today, and I don't want to get run down the road because one thing you got to remember is uh, a car is always going to win. Doesn't even matter if it's a little Nissan Sentra. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get destroyed if a car decides to swipe into you. Looks like this is a turn only lane, so I gotta jump off to the right. I'm gonna check my six here. We're good to go. And that was unfortunate because I did have to get over and the guy sped up, so that was my bad a little bit. I didn't see that I was in a turn only lane, so we're just gonna go like that. Let him know that I uh, didn't mean to do that. But hey, nobody's perfect, right? I didn't realize I was in a turn lane, had to get over pretty quick. I had my blinker on, I did accelerate, so it was what it was, you know? But yeah, that's the, the kind of raw things I want to show you guys. That sometimes it's not perfect, you know? Motorcyclists make mistakes too. You want to try to ride as safe as possible, but sometimes, you know, you mess up. And that's the kind of deference you got to give the car drivers too, because you might think that you're perfect and you're riding in a perfect way, but there's many times where you make small mistakes and uh, you know, you didn't mean to, like I didn't know I was in a turn only lane over there. I don't ride in this part of town very often. And so I was kind of stuck back there. But yeah, you want to make sure that, you know, you give deference to people. If they're, if they're making mistakes, doing stuff like that, that you are, you know, just letting them know like, hey, like didn't mean to do that. And then if someone does that to you, don't get super irate and crazy about it. It's not worth it. And what's interesting is, you guys will develop this sense. There's some days where you're riding and you just get this sense that you're like, I shouldn't be riding today. <laughs> like if certain things keep happening to you and certain weird situations keep happening, you might just say, I got a bad feeling about today. You know, I kind of have that feeling today. Go ahead and bank this U-turn. I had the yield, so I was good to go. But yeah, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not the type to edit stuff out like that. Um, these are these are really meant to be like very raw impressions of how it is to drive in traffic. And dude, sometimes you make mistakes, man. 
Sometimes you do stuff that you're like, oh man, I didn't mean to do that, you know? Because we're all fallible. We're all human beings. So, sitting here, left hand signal. Uh, one thing I like to do, I've talked to you guys about this before in the videos, I like to observe what the traffic pattern is while I'm sitting at the light, just to know kind of what the flow is and what's going on. It looks like both directions of travel are going north and south here. Uh, we're gonna see if we get the turn signal first. If we do, uh, I'm gonna check my left and my right very carefully just to make sure nobody is gonna run the red here. So, way here, we'll see what happens. One thing you can do as well for you guys at home, I'm sure you guys already do this, but if you observe the traffic lights, you can see that they're green right now and you can see when it starts to turn yellow. So right there it turned yellow, so now I can go ahead and grab my gear, I can sit here floating the rear brake, we'll see if we get the turn signal, and we did not. So now, all these guys are going to turn and these guys are going, we're only going to be able to go when that turns green up there, so uh, that's a bit of a safer intersection setup, and I've seen that before and I do prefer it. So I got the green, but I waited a little bit just to make sure guys are slowing down. And you can tell when the cars are coming towards the other side, you can see when they're starting to slow down a little bit, and that's going to give you a, uh, a good perspective to, uh, to see that you can actually make that left-hand turn. So I'm going to kick back here into the left portion of the lane, ideal for us, making sure that we don't stick next to cars very much. Could cook it back on the speed a little bit. It's 45 here. We're doing about 50. Watching this guy's got a brake lights on. I see an emergency vehicle all the way down there. So let's see if they decide to turn into our lane or what's going on here. I'm going to preemptively get over to the right just to make sure. Watching our intersection here turned yellow, but nobody was coming. So we're all good. Um, let's see what this fire truck's doing. Let's see if I don't think they need to barrel through this field, right? So we should be good to go. And yeah, he's just going along his way right there. So we're fine. Uh, I've mentioned this in another one of my uh, riding in traffic with the AM videos where uh, emergency vehicles are crazy unpredictable because <laughs> like you can't, they don't have indicators. They just have all the lights flashing. So the best thing you can do is just like, just slow the hell down, keep an eye on them, go off to the side because you never know where they're going to go or what they're going to do. I've seen fire trucks just like barrel through intersections because they have somewhere to be, you know, they got an emergency. And uh, yeah, you don't want to be anywhere near that thing when it's just barreling through an intersection. All right, coming into a highway intersection here. We have a right-hand turn with a yield. Now, these are super important. Sometimes you've got a protected lane. Most of the times you do not. Right here, we do not. So you want to make sure you go nice and easy. We have clear visibility here. One thing that can happen like this, you see that guy was turning right, right into this lane. I've seen sometimes where people go, but they're still looking backwards. <laughs> Before you start accelerating, make sure you're looking forwards. That's uh, really kind of silly. I I've seen lots of people have tiny little fender benders doing that where <laughs> they're looking backwards and they're going there. So I'm here on the left. I saw that BMW pull up. I already had my hand over my brake and my uh, horn just in case. We're not going too fast. I have my indicator still on, so I'll go ahead and cancel it. We're floating through here, going underneath the uh, the big old highway here. Got some traffic up ahead of us. This lane is merging down, so there's no reason for me to go off into the left lane. Just go ahead and cruise right here. Grabbing my gears down, making sure I'm in an appropriate rev range to take this corner. And look at that, if you're, if you're cruising in traffic, it's very simple, very easy to navigate your corners. Stick all the way to the outside, go to the inside, do a racing line, why not <laughs> go back to the outside? <laughs> We're just having fun, folks, right? On a motorcycle, supposed to have fun. Not supposed to orgasmically follow the speed limit. All right, truck in front of us, hanging right that's where we're going to be going as well because we're trying to avoid the traffic on the main road over there. Making it back over here. Cruising through a more residential area. Now, it's, uh, what's today? It's Friday at like 1.40 right now. Um, and so I know that uh, rush hour is probably going to be starting here relatively soon. But because I'm on this like back residential road, I don't expect much traffic. 
not many bicyclists either because uh, what can happen too is sometimes on these more residential streets you'll see uh, bicyclists go in kamikaze mode and I say that as a cyclist myself sometimes we go kamikaze mode we go have to cut across the lanes and get to where we're trying to go so always be deferential to cyclists because sometimes we're uh, very low on carbohydrates and we're in the middle of a big sprint and uh, we make some silly decisions <laughs> Cruise along here not going too fast doing about 39 miles an hour in the more residential area You see we got some apartments. We have a couple businesses over here This is clearly a a back road And so you definitely want to be a little bit more careful as well. You got people walking got pedestrians um, You know all those sort of things. So there's really no need to be going too fast over here. All right, go through the inter Oh, I knew that guy was going for it, man. Knew it. So that's why you cover your front brake. That's crazy, right? Like, you're going straight to the intersection. You're taking an eye at everybody. And you're going straight. And the dude just, he threatens to go left. And you're like, bro, don't threaten to go left. I'm trying to go straight to this intersection. But that's why you keep your front brake covered. Give yourself space. Put yourself in a good position. That's all folks, that's the end of the video. Our time is up, but if you want the conversation to keep going, join me over on yamminoob.co, become a member. You'll gain access to our infamous Discord server. I'm on there every day, so if you wanna to talk to me, ask me some questions, just shoot the BS about motorcycles. That's the best way to do it. And you'll get entered to win this MT-09 SP. This is one of my favorite giveaway bikes we've done, and uh, I would hate for you to miss out on it. But if you need a little bit of time to think about it, Click the link right over here. Keep watching yourself some Yammy Noob. We have tons of premier, top tier, incredible motorcycle videos just waiting for you. They're free. Watch them. <laughs>